Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech24, a show that explores the digital revolution. Coming up, you've probably never heard of the island of Bangka, but you might have a tiny piece of it in your pocket. In this edition, we take you to Indonesia, where thousands of men and boys risk their lives digging for tin for one reason only, satisfy our growing appetite for the latest electronics gadgets. And in Test 24 this week, we test the Sleep Companion by Holy, a light bulb that acts on your body's natural production of melatonin, the sleep hormone. One third of the world's tin comes from the Indonesian islands of Bangka and Belitung, where thousands of men risk serious injury and death in the mines, but also underwater. Pachi is one of them. He's putting his life on the line on a daily basis, dredging the seabed for tin, a vital component inside smartphones and tablets that's brought riches and ruin to his island home. Diving for tin, a key component for smartphones and tablets. Pachi and his crew use basic methods to dredge the seabed surrounding the Indonesian islands of Bangka and Belitung. If lucky, they'll earn up to $15 a day. It is very dangerous work and the risks are huge. But what are you going to do? It's my life and this is my job. One third of the world's tin comes from these islands, mined both offshore and inland. And the demand shows no sign of slowing down. But it is dangerous business. According to the Indonesian Tin Working Group, at least one miner dies every week in this area alone. I'm just trying to earn a living. We don't think about accidents. Consumers are increasingly aware of the negative impact of tin mining. Electronic firms use roughly two grams of tin inside every smartphone and have come under pressure to lessen their environmental footprint. Till this day, we haven't seen any impact, no concrete action. They promised responsibility to improve the environmental conditions in Banka. But till this day, we haven't seen any of those plans implemented. Major tech companies, including Apple, Samsung, Microsoft and Sony, have pledged to support less harmful mining practices. Two pilot projects due to start later in 2017 are aiming to improve worker safety and rehabilitate degraded land. Tin has been mined in this area for over four centuries, but the mineral wealth has brought both riches and ruin to these islands and their people. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. What are some other elements than tin that are used in mobile phones? Well, a smartphone is really a chemist's dream because there are a number of elements that go in the making of right from the screen to the battery. Now, as you can see here, this is the periodic table and most of the elements which you'll find inside the smartphone are belong to this category of transition metals. The ones I haven't you seen see this since yellow. high school. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's the ultimate guide to, know, to knowing everything that's around you or even elsewhere. So, right, so we'll start with the screen. The screen is, of course, made of glass. So it contains alumina and silica. This glass is then toughened by putting it under heat treatment. So it is heated till 900 degrees Celsius. It is again chemically treated to get potassium ions inside it. So it adds more strength to it. Now, after the glass, or it's not just the uh, uh, glass that makes the screen because you need it to be a touch screen. So you need to have a conducting material in it. Glass is not a conducting material. So there's a thin transparent film of indium tin oxide that is added to the glass that makes it a capacitive touchscreen phone. Uh, so that is the screen part. Then we go deeper. Let's go to the heart of the heart of the phone. That is the processor. It is made of silicon, and there is some doping of different elements in order to add conductivity to it. Then there's also use of gold, silver for making micro components, as well as in some uh, parts in the in the circuitry. Uh, copper is used for the wirings. And finally, let's go to the battery. The battery is made of lithium, cobalt, and carbon. And now another element has been making headlines, but for the wrong reason, and it's been dubbed uh, the conflict mineral. It's tantalum. That's right. It's one of the most important elements which is used in uh, smartphones because tantalum has unique properties. It can stay stable till 150 degrees Celsius. It is naturally anti-corrosive. Uh, it is also easily, easily malleable, and the most important, of, uh, important property of it is that it has high capacitance, which means it can hold 
high electric charge. That's why it is used to make capacitors. Now, this tantalum is found in, uh, in the form of a mineral ore called coltan, whose deposits, there are a large number of deposits in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And it so happens that uh, because of this growing demand uh, for tantalum as the uh, smartphone market exploded, uh, rebel groups in the Democratic Republic of Congo, they started using or mining this uh, ore and the, f the money they got it from it, it was of course used for, to funnel or to fuel the, the civil war. So in around, I think, five years ago, uh, the U.S. Uh, passed an act by which uh, companies manufacturing phones in, in, in the U.S., they had to disclose the source of these conflict uh, elements, not just tantalum, but gold, tungsten, and tin as well. Thank you so much, Dan. On a much lighter note, I have a question for you. Have you ever lived next to someone who's trying to learn how to play drums? No. Well, you haven't, but maybe some <laughs> of, our, of our viewers have. And if it's the case, well, this next story may be music to your ears. A Swedish startup has created a virtual drum kit that connects with a smartphone app piped directly to headphones. Brian Quinn has the story. What do you call the guy who hangs around with musicians? Here in Malmo, you might call him the entrepreneur. Free Drum is a Swedish startup making a virtual drum kit that can be played anywhere. It's welcome news to drummers tired of having to lug bulky hardware around just to practice. We created the drum kit because drummers all have the same problem. A drum kit is a ball and chain instrument. We're not trying to recreate the, the drum kit. We're trying to allow you a method to practice in between when you can play at a drum kit and when you can't. Sensor units strapped to the drummer's feet and sticks gather information about position, angle, and velocity, translating movements in free space into hits on a virtual drum. Bluetooth technology sends the information to smartphone apps like GarageBand, where it's turned into sound. Kicked off in August of 2015, a crowdfunding drive snared over 620,000 US dollars, 400% more than the initial goal. One concern the company has yet to address, what will become of old fashioned air drumming? Free Drum expects to start shipping in November. And Dan, you have another quirky innovation you want to tell us more about. It was created by the popular Instructables maker Xenon John. That's right, but before I start describing it, let's listen to the piece of music uh, from this instrument. Wow, so it's, it's not that harmonious, is it? That's true, but then it's played by a robot, so I don't think you can match the the talent and the expertise of human beings to what the robot is doing. Anyway, but it's an, it's an interesting, uh, interesting innovation because uh, this is the first time uh, perhaps that a bagpipe is being played by, by two hands, uh, which are made uh, uh, by using 3D printing. These are uh, plastic hands. And the idea is that it's a low cost bagpipe uh, chanter. So you can learn how to play the bagpipe. And the fingers, as you can see, they cover, cover and uncover the holes, and that's how the music is created. Uh, as of now, you need someone to blow the air into the pipe, but in the future, the maker is uh, going to use a, a mechanical device that keeps on pumping air, so it's completely free. For it to be free. completely autonomous. Absolutely, and uh, uh, the, there's a code behind this, uh, the use of fingers, and there's a microcontroller, a mini computer that controls the entire thing. Thank you so much, Dan. We're gonna move on now to Test24. If you're looking to enhance the quality of your sleep, you're going to want to listen to this upcoming Test 24. Sleep Companion is a light bulb designed to synchronize the body's biological rhythm with a smartphone app, so it can analyze sleep quality and provide personalized advice to improve one's sleep. Dan, as the name suggests, it's truly a sleep companion. Well, yes, that's what the company claims. So the idea is that this bulb, it, you can replace your ordinary bulb with the bulb which I've already inserted in the lamp. You just turn on the lamp. And uh, this bulb has a Bluetooth connection, so you can connect uh, this bulb to your smartphone using Bluetooth. And you can set different parameters on your smartphone, like setting an alarm, a peculiar music. Now, what this bulb does is, as you mentioned in your introduction, that uh, it has a peculiar hue, a blue hue, which it starts emitting just 20 minutes before the alarm. 
And this is supposed to bring down the levels of melatonin, which uh, is the sleep hormone. And so by, by reducing the, uh, the levels of melatonin, you apparently wake up ready, very fresh and ready to, uh, I don't know, ready to start, your, start day. your daily tasks. Right. So that's the idea behind it. Now the bulb and the app together, they... Uh, so maybe you wake up a little bit... Easy, like you ease into you, it you instead of just, it. you know, sudden wake up with like, I don't know, being with exposed beat, to intense right. light. It can be a bit, I don't know, you start feeling uh, groggy or not fully energized or... So those are the problems that this uh, bulb uh, claims to deal. And maybe you wake up in a better mood as well. Perhaps, Perhaps. who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the second part is that uh, it, uh, the app and the bulb together, they, they uh, detect or they sense the temperature, the noise levels and the brightness levels. And accordingly, the light adjusts the brightness. So that is also an important thing. Apparently light is the most uh, important stimulant when it comes to sleep, whether it's disturbing your sleep or whether it's making you feel energetic when you wake up. So they have, I mean, there's a lot of research that has already been done in this field. And this, uh, uh, Holly, the, the, uh, the lamp uses this research and that's how you have the app and, uh, and the bulbs. And how much is it? Uh, it costs around 90 euros. Uh, I'm now trying to show you the app. So it's available on both uh, Android and iOS. And it's a very simple app, so you can set alarm for different tunes, birds chirping. So there are many options in this. And, but for, as far as I'm concerned, I think my best sleep companions are, first is Blindfold and some fat book on philosophy, which puts me to sleep instantly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that's it from me and the Tech24 team. We hope you enjoyed the show. And if you'd like to get in touch with your comments on the stories we've been covering, find us on Facebook at Tech24. And you can tweet me at Julia Seeger. Until next time, thanks for watching.